Alleluia. Christ is risen. Christ is risen indeed. Alleluia. Greetings from Camino Lutheran Church on the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Amen. We continue our worship together as we continue our journey through the Easter season with the thanksgiving for baptism. Joined to Christ in the waters of baptism, we are welcomed, restored, and supported as citizens of the new creation. Let us give thanks for the gift of baptism. Holy God, holy and merciful, holy and mighty, you are the river of life. You are the everlasting wellspring. In mercy and might, you have freed us from death and raised us with Jesus, the firstborn of the dead. In the baptismal waters, our old life is washed away. And in them, we are born anew. Glory to you for oceans and lakes, for rivers and streams. Honor to you for waters that wash us clean, quench our thirst, and nurture both crops and creatures. Praise to you for the life-giving water of baptism, the outpouring of the Spirit for the new creation. Wash away our sin and all that separates us from you. Empower our witness to your resurrection. Strengthen our resolve in seeking justice for all. Satisfy the world's need through this living water, where drought dries the earth, bring refreshment. Where despair prevails, grant hope, where chaos reigns, give peace. We ask this through Christ, who with you and the Spirit reigns forever. Amen.
The Lord be with you, and also with you. Let us pray. Almighty and ever-living God, you hold together all things in heaven and on earth. In your great mercy, receive the prayers of all your children, and give to all the world the spirit of your truth and peace. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our first reading is taken from Acts chapter 17, beginning with the 22nd verse. Paul stood in front of the Areopagus and said, Athenians, I see how extremely religious you are in every way. For as I went through the city and looked carefully at the objects of your worship, I found among them an altar with the inscription, To an unknown God. What therefore you worship as unknown, this I proclaim to you. The God who made the world and everything in it, he who is Lord of heaven and earth, does not live in shrines made by human hands, nor is he served by human hands as though he has need of anything, since he himself gives to all mortals life and breath and all things. From one ancestor he made all nations to inhabit the whole earth, and he allotted the times of their existence and the boundaries of their places where they should live, so that they would search for God and perhaps grope for him and find him though indeed he is not far from each one of us. For in him we live and move and have our being. As even some of your own poets have said, for we too are his offspring. Since we are God's offspring, we ought not to think that the deity is like gold or silver or stone, an image formed by the art and imagination of mortals. While God has overlooked the times of human ignorance, now he commands all people everywhere to repent, because he has fixed a day on which he will have the world judged in righteousness by a man whom he has appointed, and of this he has given assurance to all by raising him from the dead. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. The second reading is from 1 Peter chapter 3, starting at verse 13. Who will harm you if you are eager to do what is good? But even if you do suffer for doing what is right, you are blessed. Do not fear what they fear, and do not be intimidated. But in your hearts sanctify Christ as Lord. Always be ready to make your defense to anyone who demands from you an accounting for the hope that is in you. Yet do it with gentleness and reverence. Keep your conscience clear. So that when you are maligned, those who abuse you for your good conduct in Christ may be put to shame. For it is better to suffer for doing good, if suffering should be God's will, than to suffer for doing evil. For Christ also suffered for sins once for all, the righteous for the unrighteous, in order to bring you to God. He was put to death in the flesh, but made alive in the spirit in which also he went and made proclamation to the saints in prison, who in former times did not obey. When God waited patiently in the days of Noah, during the building of the ark, in which a few, that is, eight persons, were saved through water. And baptism, which this prefigured, now saves you, not as a removal of dirt from your body, but as an appeal to God for a good conscience, through the resurrection of Jesus Christ, who has gone into heaven and is at the right hand of God with angels, authorities, and powers made subject to him. Word of hope, word of life. Thanks be to God. The Holy Gospel on the sixth Sunday in the season of Easter is taken from John chapter 14, beginning with the 15th verse. Jesus said to the disciples, if you love me, you will keep my commandments. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another advocate to be with you forever. This is the Spirit of truth, whom the world cannot see, because it neither sees him nor knows him. You know him because he abides with you 
and he will be in you. I will not leave you orphaned. I am coming to you. In a little while, the world will no longer see me, but you will see me. Because I live, you also will live. On that day, you will know that I am in the Father, and you in me, and I in you. They who have my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Word of hope, word of life, thanks be to God. Let us pray. Gracious God, bless the words of my mouth, the meditations of my heart, that they are pleasing to you and faithful to your gospel. Open our eyes and ears that we might see and hear you and who you are and who we are. Help us see us because you live within us through the power of your spirit. These things we pray in Jesus' name. Amen. Harold Burke Sivers writes in Ignite, Read the Bible Like Never Before. God calls us to complete transparency by revealing us to ourselves in his word. As he reveals himself to us in his word, we see ourselves more clearly. The more obedient to that word we are, the more holy we become. Now, I guess I would push for the first thing is oftentimes when we think of holy, we think of pious. The idea is holy, set apart. Um, think of yourself in, in such a way of connected, in relationship. While I say set apart, it's about being connected to God, being in relationship with God. And that set apart is from those things which pull us away from God, which are indeed against who God is and what God is about. So if God reveals God's self to us in his word, what does his word tell us? In our gospel lesson, we start out right away reading, If you love me, you will keep my commandments. And in the Greek, that keep is, you will continue to keep my commandments. means it's something that is ongoing. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. So what are the commandments that Jesus is calling us to keep? Well, I want to invite you to take a little bit of a journey with me that I took earlier this week. Because I went back to chapter 13 and read John chapter 13 through 16. And now listen to see if you can pick up a theme. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. In chapter 13, we have the foot washing story where Jesus washes the disciples' feet. In verse 1, we read, Jesus loved his own and loved them to the end. This wasn't short-term love. This was a lasting love. He takes the position of a servant and washing feet. And remember, Peter, no, you're not going to wash my feet. If I don't, you have no part in me. And Judas was there. And he washed his feet. And every disciple who would leave him was there. And his darkest hour was there. And he washed their feet. In verse 34 to 35, I give you a new commandment. Love one another as I have loved you. By this, by this loving one another as I have loved you, they will know, the world will know, that you are my disciples if you love one another. The world looks, apparently, and the world seeks to see, do these followers of Jesus reflect Jesus or something else? In chapter 14, which we had the beginning last week. Don't let your hearts be troubled. Believe in me. Believe also I go to prepare a place for you. I am the way, the truth, and the life. And remember we talked about last week that I am the way, the truth, and the life isn't just the future, but the now. And what does it mean to follow the one who is the way, who has shown the disciples what the way looks like, who has shown them what truth looks like, who has shown them what life looks like. And verse 12 you will do greater works than me. You'll do greater works than me. Do we ever even imagine that? How is that even possible? Well, it's possible through the theme that we see in these chapters 13 through 16. If you love me, verse 15, you will keep my commandments and I will give you another counselor. What were those commandments again? 
Love the Lord your God with all your heart, soul, and mind. Love your neighbor as yourself. Verse 21, he who has my commandments and keeps them loves me. And God loves them and I love them. It's a love fest. Verse 23, if one loves me, they will keep my word and my father loves him and he, we will make our home with him. Relationship, connection, all gathered and based around deep love. Verse 27, my peace I leave with you, not as the world gives. Do not let your hearts be troubled. It is a peace that calms the troubledness of our hearts. Verse 30, the ruler of this world has no power over me, but I do as the Father commanded me, so the world will know what? That I love the Father. Because when we see Jesus, we see who God is. That's what he said to the disciples on many occasions. And then into verse to chapter 15, the story of the vine and the branches. Remain in me, remain in the vine. Verse four, abide in me and I in you. Connection, relationship again. Verse nine, as the father has what? Loved me, so I have loved you. The outpouring of God's love in Christ is the love that bonds them together. And they abide in that love. Verse 10, if you will keep my commandments, you will abide in my love. So what does it mean to keep those commandments again? Abiding in his love, just as I have kept my father's commandments and abide in his love. Verse 11, these things I have spoken to you that my joy may be in you and your joy may be full. Why does he keep bringing them back to keeping his commandments, to love God, love one another? Because that is the place where Jesus' joy will be fully in us and we will be full. We will be full. And verse 12 and 13, this is my commandment, that you love one another as I have loved you. Greater love has no person than this, that they lay down their life for their friend. No greater love than that. And that's exactly where Jesus is headed and what he will do. He will lay down his life. That's the fullness of love for his friends. Set aside just his desires. Set aside his angers and hurts at the things that have been done for him, to, done to him. He sets all of that aside, setting aside the powers that the world would have given him to show what true power looks like, seen in what is foolishness, the foolishness of the cross. And then chapter 16, verse 1, I have said all these things to keep you from falling away. Have you picked up on what the theme is yet? Love. Love. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. That's the heart of what Jesus is saying to us. In this world, we look around and we wonder, what are the answers? If we just get the right leaders in the right positions in office, sure, it might help. But will it solve the issues of the world? No, not in the end. Because we know human beings will always wrestle with seeking their spot at the table at the head of the table? Is it just having this group get their way is going to solve everything? No. What is the theme throughout that Jesus is calling them to? Love, love, love. Verse two through eight, the Holy Spirit will convince the world. Jesus calls us to love, but it is hard to love. It is hard to love. It's hard to love, and that's why Jesus said, I'm going to send a counselor, an advocate, who will be with you forever. This is the spirit of truth, whom the world cannot receive because it does not know them. Because I live, you also will live. It is the spirit, that gift given to us in our baptism, that reminds us and journeys with us along the way of who we are and who we're called to be. That we are to reflect the love that God has given to us. We reflect out to the world. But that is hard really hard in fact i was reading uh for our online devotions on monday a piece from jeanette bialis or excuse me heather lee schmidt of benedictine oblate and she writes in the word in season she says how often do we kill the word of god in us because there is no place in it when we're talking the world the word of god where do we find what jesus commandments are in the word of god to love one another 
as God has loved us. How often do we kill the word of God in us? Do we kill that love that has been poured in us? Because there is no place for it. Our lives get filled up. Mine sometimes so much that I can't, I can't make a place in the inn for the word to be born. We get so busy that love moves its way out and everything else becomes our focus and attention. There is no place for the truth that sets me free. There is no place in life to listen for that still small voice that calls me to the truth. When we get so busy doing whatever it is that we're doing, we get pulled away from that which is the way, the truth, and the life. We get pulled away from keeping the commandments. We can easily get pulled away from being connected to God's word, which reveals to us who we are. What is filling up your life, she asks. Do you have anxiety about the future? See, this is where love gets hard. Jesus says, don't worry. Is there blame and hate towards others? Oh, love is hard. Jesus says, do not judge, but love your neighbor. It's hard. Is there a to-do list that stems from power, self-importance, and the accumulation of wealth? Yes, but that's how I get ahead in the world. Ah. But Jesus says, blessed are the peacemakers and the poor. Is there a place in you for the word of God, or do you kill it, extinguish it, or force it out? The truth will make you free. Let us make space and welcome it in. You see, you're probably saying, oh, Scott's talking about love again. Love, love, love. What it, it's hard. Just those things that she mentioned. Love your enemies. Don't judge. Forgive. How challenging is that? And so Jesus is making it clear because he knows the road ahead for these disciples is a hard, hard road. They're going to watch him die. They're going to watch him get killed. No matter how hard they tried chopping off the soldier's ear when they came, they didn't want it to happen. But it is there that the fullness of God's love is revealed. And it lives in them. It lives in them. Why? Because the power of the spirit, the power of the counselor, the advocate, that's the advocate's role, continually pointing us back to Christ. There's that famous picture of Martin Luther pointing over, it's over in the, the church in Germany, pointing from the pulpit over to the cross, that that is what it's all about. That's what we're all about. The spirit of truth, because I live, you will live also. Those who keep my commandments and keep them are those who love me. And those who love me will be loved by my Father and will love, and I will love them and reveal myself to them. Bishop Michael Curry writes, thinking about the Spirit being with us, that advocate that Jesus spend, sends. The Spirit doesn't solve our problems, but invites us to see possibilities where we would have seen otherwise. Rather than remove our fear, the Spirit grants us courage to move forward. Rather than promise safety, the Spirit promises presence, God's presence. Rather than remove us from the turbulent world or even settle the turbulence, the Spirit enables us to keep our footing amid the tremors. And maybe that's why when we hear the term love, we phase out. Oh, it's so familiar. There's no depth to it. But probably the reality is, is because it is so deep and it scares us. Real love scares us because it invites us to be vulnerable. It invites us to be in connection and relationship with God and with others. Keep in mind, he goes on, that after the spirit is given to Jesus at his baptism, it immediately drives him into the wilderness. The same spirit. If you love me, you will keep my commandments. I've heard this said so many times in such a way that Notice, he doesn't say, if you don't, I won't. He just says, if you love me, you'll keep my commandments. How can we not? How can we not with such deep grace that has been given to us? Everything we do should flow, we hope, out of that gift of grace, even the difficult stuff that we can trust God to be with us. It doesn't take away the pain. It doesn't take away the hurt all the time. It doesn't mean life is without its moments of suffering and struggle, but it does mean God is present. And it is the peace that can be an answer that can change and transform 
all that in our world which seems to be dividing us and pulling us apart. Dr. Martin Luther King said, we must discover the power of love, the redemptive power of love. And when we do that, we will be able to make of this old world a new world. Love is the only way. <sighs> seems simple, seems so oversaid, but reflect on our text and reflect on 13 to 16. Reread it yourself. What is God calling us to? In a world so divided, in a world filled with hate, love is the answer to transform and conquer those pieces. And we see it happening. May it also happen in me, and may it also happen in you. Amen. United in the hope and joy of the resurrection, let us pray for the church, for the world, and for all in need. God, our faithful companion, you promised to never leave us and to send your spirit to guide us in wisdom and truth. Send your people into the world to serve as mirrors that reflect and magnify your love. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. All the earth sings praises to you. Grant your care to the creatures, plants, and places that are suffering, and equip us to respond to their song. Make us agents of restoration and refreshment for all your beloved creation. Hear us, O oh God. Your mercy is great. You, all, you call all people of the world your children. Judge the nations justly. Show mercy to all who are oppressed and speak truth to power through your prophets. Hear us, O oh God, your mercy is great. Nurturing Lord, you sent your spirit to grant us peace. Make your presence known to those who feel abandoned or alone and to all who are sick or grieving. We especially remember Caden, Amy, Alexis, Pam, John, Sharon, Jay, and Karen. We also pray for Terry, Tracy, Shannon, Jessica, Carl, Greg and Kim, Jeanette, Karen, Kelly, Joel, Pat, Ron, and Dick and Patty. Be with Karen and Kevin, a new, 
Hushagen as they gathered together with the community of faith on Tuesday to place Inez into your care for eternity. Give them strength wrapped in your arms of mercy. Once again, Lord, gun violence has raged in our country. Be with the community so deeply affected and be with our kids and our youth and with each of us who become more nervous about simply attending school or going to the store. Provide caregivers, provide first responders to continue to be present in those community, representing your love amidst the violence of hate. We also remember those named in our bulletin, on our prayer chain, and those we name aloud or in the silence of our hearts at this time. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. You hold us in your loving care. We pray for mothers and mother figures. Console all who long to be mothers, children estranged from their mothers, anyone grieving the death of a mother, and mothers who have lost a child. Support all for whom this day is difficult. Hear us, O God, your mercy is great. Rejoicing in the victory of Christ's resurrection, we lift our prayers and praise to you, almighty and eternal God, through Jesus Christ, our risen Lord. Amen. We pray together as you taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Let us pray. Merciful God, our ordinary gifts seem small for such a celebration, but you make of them an abundance, just as you do with our lives. Receive with thanksgiving what you have first given us, ourselves, our time, and our possessions, all signs of your gracious love. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. <laughs>
brought forth Jesus from the dead, raise you to new life, fill you with hope, and turn your mourning into dancing. And may Almighty God bless you and keep you. May God's face shine on you and be gracious to you. May God look upon you with favor and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the risen one. Thanks be to God. Greetings for, <clears throat> greetings for, I kind of got a little high, greetings for announcements from here in the small sanctuary. Uh, first announcement, just a reminder of the memorial service on Tuesday morning, May 16th at 10 a.m. for Inez Hushagen. Uh, we hope you can come and gather together to be a support for the family and for one another as we celebrate Inez's life and place her into God's care as she clings to the promise of Christ's resurrection. Our Benevolence of the Month is Mission Aviation Fellowship. Again, we have two, two separate uh, families that we support. David Perkins, our IT guy, he flies up into a remote area in Alaska. And then Brian and Mary Ingebrad are over in Lesotho, South Africa. Um, David brings equipment and sets up their communication, their only line of communication beyond their, their community there. Um, so an important, valuable tool that he is a part of with this community. And then Brian and Mary are over in Lesotho, South Africa, and they fly in supplies, take people to doctor's appointments, cover it with emergencies and things that happen. So if you'd like to give a little extra for that, uh, you can donate online, just hit the donate button, it will take you there. And then as well, if you write a check, just write BOM for Benevolence of the Month and then MAF for Mission Aviation Fellowship. Um, and then David is part of MATA, Mission Aviation Training Academy. And then you're all invited to come and join us on Saturday, May 20th at 11 a.m. over at the Camino Lutheran Cemetery as we're going to have the dedication of our new columbarium and a plaque that's dedicated to uh, Alan Gilbertson and all the work that he did over the years uh, playing such an important role in, in, in the, the cemetery and taking care of all the things that, that go with that and the families and communities that gather there. So again, May 20th, Saturday, 11 a.m. Preschool graduation. If you want to come watch graduation, see these wonderful little kids, I just love it. It's one of my favorite times of the year, um, though sad because I know some of them are, are, are moving on and we won't see them as much anymore. But that's Tuesday, May 16th at 6.30 over in the large sanctuary space. So Tuesday, May 16th at 6.30. And then last but not least, uh, next week on May 21st, we will be welcoming in our new members. Um, some have been here for a while. We had some that were a part of the class right before COVID hit. Literally, we had one more class to go and COVID hit. So they've never been officially welcomed in as new members as long as as well with those who are newer in the last year. So I invite you, uh, if you have the opportunity to come in person, we'll have, you'll be here for our new member Sunday. If not, please keep them in your prayers. Those are all of our announcements for this week. God's peace and blessings in all that you do and on your week. God's peace, everyone.